Hello everyone, this is Serious Trivia, and welcome back to Empire of Sins. It's been a year since the game has been launched, and we played a few Let's Plays of the game after launch, and we sort of stopped playing because of some issues with the game. And since then, the game has undergo two major patches, including the latest DLC launch that introduced Loam Sharking, and it's called Make It Count. And we're jumping back into the game because there's also a bunch of other changes that came along with the DLC for free. Uh, particularly the precinct system and the supply route. So we'll jump into that as we play. And we're going to be starting off a new game with the new character that's introduced in the DLC. Al Capone. How you Not doing? Al Capone. Hey. We'll find him here. Hey, how you doing? And if you're familiar with how the game worked on launch, you might notice some of the bonuses for these bosses have changed drastically. Goldie Good but choice. we still have our familiar faces. So we mock. Maggie. More. We're looking for me. our Lone Sharker. Dead. Maxim Zelnik. Murder Inc. Maxim Zelnik. So he represents America here, uh, ethnicity. And we have a boss ability, bolster the ranks. When activated, we'll get a fixer and an enforcer to appear at the nearest available entrance to your boss. These bodyguards become stronger as you gain more notoriety. So we're not the fighter. We don't have any cool special abilities that can clear a whole room like we did with some of the bosses from before. We ask for help. We are accountant by trade, a dirty one at that. And you can see our empire bonuses, accountancy firm, exclusive improvements law, our loan shark income in this precinct, which is a new addition to the game where they divide each of the city neighbors, uh, neighborhoods, I guess, into separate precinct that you can control and uh, increases by 10%. Shark smile, uh, our Lone Shark starting level, plus one. You have plus one percent, well, you have minus one percent chance of default on the loans you make. So essentially, we have a new type of racket in the game, Lone Shark. And we'll talk about this before we jump into game, not in terms of mechanic, but really in terms of the historical backdrop of this during Prohibition. As playing this game, part of the charm is the Prohibition setting. Now, not all characters are historical, of course, like Maxim Zelnik doesn't have a historical counterpart, but I'm sure he's inspired by the loan shark industry of the time. Uh, we also have double time. Gangsters will be able to work for us unpaid for additional 12 weeks before leaving. I believe these are the main gangster characters you recruit from your notoriety tree. In the beginning, I think they start out unpaid if you, you know, don't have the funds and you have longer periods of time where you don't have to pay them. But if they do leave you, they will never work for you again. Mob power is our final ability here. Buyout cost 25% less for this boss, provided they have positive standing with the police. So dealing with the police has become a greater um, issue in this new patch. It seems like you now have to pay them off uh, much more regularly, but the system works better than before, where I think the diplomacy points you get for the payoff wasn't that high. And once every six months, we're able to force a faction to sign a truth with every other faction they are at war with. So we are sort of the diplomatic player. We are sort of half legal, half illegal. And speaking of legality of the loan shark industry, the U.S. loan sharking scene sort of started in the late 1870s, 1880s. At first, it was sort of a legal institution, right? They worked with real banks. They signed papers, they checked your credit worthiness by looking at your job. It was sort of a salary loan. We still sort of have salary loans today, where basically you're promising your future salary income to the loan shark. They'll lend you some cash up front for whatever emergency need you have. And that's how it got started. Then we have the shady cousin who, you know, rose as we got closer to world's uh, World War I, Prohibition era. What we have is sort of attachments to shady institutions, whether that's drug dens, whether that's gambling places, where you made money, well, the mob made money on those institutions. You paid out of your pocket. You're now addicted, whether to gambling or to drugs. You need cash. And now comes the loan sharks who will offer you cash to do these business. And they really didn't care if you're able to pay or not. Well, they would like the fact that you're able to pay, but they're going to beat you down if you're not able to pay. So that's sort of the loan sharking business that we're going to be associated with here since we are closer to prohibition with the theme of the game. 
and um, let's see if we can combine that with some gambling on our part. I don't think drug dealing is in the game. I mean, alcohol is the drug of the time, I guess. But let's hop into game and see how we do. Another major change is now neighborhoods. Uh, minimum uh, has become seven. Uh, you can also lower the number of enemy factions. If you go down to seven, maximum is 10. Used to be from one neighborhood to 10, but they found that player, I think they said one to 2% of players played less than seven neighborhoods. So they decided to just make the minimum seven easier for balancing. Let's do seven neighborhoods and let's just do seven factions. I think we're gonna ease our way back into the game. It's been a, almost a year since I played the game. Uh, we will jump to underboss though. We eventually might play on boss if the game feels good. But we're just going to keep things simple, and let's start. We meet our former mentor, Ella Hoffman, to get Ella's take on growing his empire. Maxim, you're looking well. It's good to see you after so long. You too, Miss Hoffman. Please, Maxim. After all these years, Ella will suffice. I'm not your school teacher. I'm here as your friend. And I'm grateful for the invitation. Though I am in town with other business and I must press on soon. Which I appreciate. Drink? Martini with ice. Thank you. Business is booming, I assume? I don't like that word. Not in this town. Too violent, too accurate. But things are going well. I don't like to take any chances when it comes to gambling. Neither should you. Competition is only fun if you win. I did listen over all those years, Ella. Something went in, I'm sure. And I hear you have a protege of your own now. I'm so proud. What's his name? Robin? Ruben Esterhauser. He's a good kid. Sharp. Reminds me of myself. Then I don't need to warn you to be wary. Young men have ambitions. Your advice is appreciated, but unnecessary. Then why did you invite me here? For another perspective. Like how flipping a coin shows you what you really want to do. Whatever you tell yourself. If I was you, I'd make it my business to own the gambling in my neighborhood. No one makes a bet that you don't profit from. And do it quiet. No need for things to go boom, necessarily. Not unless they have to. Already in progress. Well, that's all you get for one martini. Apart from this, watch out for your protege. Students are impatient to become masters, in my experience. I'm a better judge of character than I once was, Ella. Alrighty. So that's sort of our story to ease into the game. Takes to the street, his path is clear. Chicago City that offers no second chances, but Maxim Zelik doesn't take chances. Alright, they have a tutorial for us. I think we'll actually play this just because we haven't played the game and the new changes might be part of this tutorial. Welcome to Chicago. Let's oh, yeah. have a look around. This is fine. This stuff we know, and we can zoom in, zoom out, and there's a destination arrow. Let's go. Chicago is a dangerous place, and in order to survive, you're gonna need to learn how to fight. Fortunately, I know right where you can find one. So we got ourselves a minor, the Meat Packers, a minor gang, not an official playable faction. And we get to attack them, or enter, I guess. All right. This precinct belongs to Ronnie O'Neill. He calls himself the boss of I'm the Meat it. Packers gang. His thugs aren't gonna know what hit them. Press control to initiate combat. These two are the guards, these guys. 
In Empire of Sin, combat is turn-based. The queue of characters waiting to take their turn is above, and a turn order is decided by a character's initiative stat. If enemies are allied with a boss, that boss is also shown under their portrait. Alright, we probably should have started under better cover. I don't know how much damage we pack, so I'm not sure if jumping into his room is a smart move. Well, you can see the percentage of our shots on him depending on the cover we have and the angle we have on him. 40 health. Mm, well, let's... Let's go here. We'll at least get cover from him. And we'll get started with our shot. We can attack. We have a double fire ability with our pistol. The action bar is below. In combat, you can move. Yeah, we understand that. So I can only hit him because there's no angle on him. So the tab to cycle through target doesn't really matter. Uh, we do 14 to 19, double tap twice. And this is the percentage of hit. This is the percentage of crit. Or for short, you can see the percentage down here. A regular shot. Okay, so it's literally two shots, but it just costs both of our action points. This costs one. This ends our turn. Essentially, we can't move again. We don't have any ability to move, but I think we can do stuff like Overwatch afterward, where if they uh, move, we can attack them and so forth. Reactionary shots. Yeah, we can set an Overwatch angle. Hmm... It's going to end up being two shots of the pistol anyways, even with the overwatch. We can try to get a crit and just maybe finish him off. Let's see if it works. Nope. It's going to get bloody for us. Two action points. Bosses have unique abilities with special effects that unlock after you've disposed of a certain number of enemies. You'll see the icon. Oh, that's a change. With each successful kill the boss makes. Use those abilities strategically when they become available. That's a new change, actually. That's actually fair, because some of the boss abilities were insane. You just clear rooms with just their boss. Alright, he's over here. I'm going to take his old cover, although he's going to be... I'm going to just kill him first with a regular shot, and then I can move afterward, I think. Oh, shit. They got me! Oh. Now we're facing off against him. I doubt he can run that far. Take this angle here. Huh. Using cover is vital or half cover rep Yeah, we got it. Uh barrels make sense. Although I can probably just shoot him now. 85%, it's not bad. Double fire for 85. We also need to worry about ammo count. We have two shots left in our pistol. Enough for a double fire, but then we probably have to reload and start the next turn. That's okay. He only has 40 health. So we will start this turn with a reload, unless we want to go up and melee him. This is a promising development. And just a little tap. There we go. Finally got a crit. Notoriety goes up. I live to fight another day. Picked up a item that became equipped. So now our melee attack is going to be with a knife if we do equip that. Faction standing drops with the meat packers, the game that we just attacked, and we got some money from them. Fun. We ransacked the building, got more money, picked up some special ammo that increased crit, picked up some healing item, 25 health, and then 25 health for the next four turns, 10% resistant negative effect, band-aid, 20 health each, removes the negative effect. Sounds good. Attacking a racket in a precinct you don't own sets it to the ransacked state. You want to own this racket? Well, you're going to have to take out the safe house at Depot first. Taking out that building takes the whole precinct. But more on that later. Right. The gunfire attracted is... some of the local criminal talent, and they're looking for work. As your empire grows, you'll gain access to bigger and better hired guns, too. Right, before we hire them, um, I want to zoom out, but it's not letting me. Okay, I guess we'll hire one of them. Either one of them. So we're going to pick one. We have a doctor, Nora Quinn. She uses a Mose. <laughs> you can snipe. I guess currently she's using a pistol. 
or maybe the pistol is a green rare quality or common qual uh, uncommon perhaps i don't know what the classification is tommy gun and a pistol here for bao chai un demolitionist has a grenade on her effect go long shock wave take your i'm gonna take a healer actually let's grab nora and we'll hire her so currently up front we don't have to pay her anything she'll take four percent of our income Oh, Notice right. that your crew members have a take, their price for working with you. The take is based on a percentage of your total earnings. In general, the better they are, the higher the take. We didn't hire her though. Gangsters range from professional oh. hitmen to shockingly wayward criminals. They have opinions about the people they work with, and their personalities and traits develop over time. Gangsters also have different professions and weapon specialties. Nora here is a mob doctor, and that means she can use sniper rifles. Position her far from her target in combat to make the most of her skills. You'll find gangsters looking for work out in the world and in the Black Book. As you become more powerful, you'll gain access to more hardened, skilled gangsters. Now, hire your second crew member. We'll take her as well. Okay. So now you've got yourself a squad. Just in time, too. It just so happens Ronnie's got a brewery close by. Let's take it out. Zoom out to the world map to see where it is. From the world map, you can see who owns what. Right now, this is Ronnie's precinct. Each precinct is controlled by a safe house or depot. Taking out other rackets in the precinct means that you'll cut down the number of reinforcements that show up when you attack the safe house at depot. So it's a good idea to hit them first. All right, so this is one of the major changes to the game. So we have neighborhoods that was in the game from before. Uh, we have seven of them here in this game. We picked seven. And now in each neighborhood, we have precincts. So you can see they're divided here. In these little blocks and each precinct has a separate safe house that sort of protects the precinct from being taken over until the safe house or uh, depot is lost uh, that's why when we attack this building we simply ransacked it because we haven't taken out the safe house actually where is the safe house this is a racket maybe this is the safe house actually not sure we're still learning about the game too uh, but like he mentions, there's two ways to take a precinct. One, you can dive straight for the safe house and take it over. Or two, you can go after the rackets first, weakening the reinforcement at the safe house. And why uh, these precincts matter is they're kind of separate blocks and they would function in terms of supplies in the game. You notice these new lines here in between neighborhoods. And that's going to be key because if you hold the racket that is on the supply line, you can get bonuses. So you can choke out perhaps another faction's development by holding the right precinct in a neighborhood. So it's another layer of strategy. So for example, here you can see they dominate control of everything that connects into this neighborhood of Little Italy. So they kind of control the flow of resources into it uh, just by owning this block, even though there's other factions owning the other precincts and so forth. So. We're going to go to the brewery. You can play a lot of this game from the world map. Yes, I understand. We can even, yeah, he's just saying we can just click here if we want. And we can attack it. Gotcha. And we don't have to zoom into street level if we don't want to, but why not? Hmm. Couple guards outside. Let's use our new friends. We didn't equip anyone with any items. The which... meat packers were expecting you. Hopefully, they've also expected their funerals. Let's take them out. All right, so we can swap weapons. It doesn't cause anything. She has a um, sniper rifle, as we mentioned. Wait, which one is she currently holding? I think she was holding the sniper rifle, actually. Yes, it caused two action to fire, so it's definitely... Oh, we can see it. She's holding the Mosin. Um, there's a distant penalty on close shots, I believe. Yeah, it's too close. Um, which means it's not suitable for this gun here. So perhaps we actually do swap. Double tap sounds pretty good. 
Damage, 10, 17. So she doesn't have a lot of damage, nor does she have a lot of accuracy here. Mm, she's also not under cover. I don't know how many we can kill. He has a shotgun. He's holding what? A pistol? We kill the shotgun first. But here we can cycle through targets. 65. She just has bad marksmanship. It can't really get improved. She's ready, you know, right open on target. We're just going to double tap her. Use up both of our action points. Oh my god. Okay, we at least crit on one. Alright, she has a Tommy. Uh, burst fire. We also have sweep. This one is kind of um, hitting a zone, right? Everyone here gets hit, including our own allies. So we're not doing that. Um, I think we definitely want to move behind cover and just shoot at her. I'm on it. All right, three burst. Good, decent crit percentage. Could have put some ammo on her. She also has a grenade, but once you use that, you have to buy a new one, I believe. Oh, Ooh, she hit all three. All right, so we can finish her off and move into cover against him. 16, or we can just double tap him, actually, just to make sure we kill her in case one shot rolls too low. There we go. Overkill. And we didn't move because we needed both action points. The pistol can't hurt that much. The boss likes to disagree with me, but let's see. I should have moved her perhaps farther. Actually, we can't go very far. This is like the farthest we can go. We can set up for a sniper shot next one. Let's do it. Use both action to move beyond the white zone. This is still pretty open. She shot pretty well. Let's continue this. missed one. We can accept that. Alright, we're gonna flank him on the other side. We killed three. Oh, it's cumulative. So we have killed three people already. We don't need it in this fight. But uh, we'll get the bodyguards out next time. The boss only has one gun as well. We need to give him a secondary. How did that hit? We had a full cover. All right, time to snipe. He also has full cover angle here. I can't move though, because I think the sniper shot takes two action points. Yep, 35%. Let's just see if we get lucky. There we go. Didn't kill him though. One health. Whoa, only 40%? How is he... How is that full cover against us? The angle doesn't feel right. Maybe we can walk out here and just tap him. I'm on it. Call a doc. Uh oh. I live to Great. fight another day. We did it. All right. Combat report. We took 40 damage. You're gonna need more than a few guns to take out Ronnie and his guards. Luckily, the black market's got everything you need. Open. Now that you're in the shop window, it's time to get yourself some provisions. If you've got the cash, you can pay to get a better weapon here, or wait for one to drop in the loot after a fight. Check the stats and effects of any item in the shop in the right window pane. If Leave the shop when you have what you need. Alright, so these will recycle once every few turns. A uh, well, few days, I guess. Every 60 days here. it will come back with new gear. Uh... You know, gold tier weapons, the color code. We can't afford these, obviously. It'd be nice. Uh, the Bowie knife that we picked up. We can also sell him stuff by going to sell mode. Obviously, the selling price, I mean, it's green. Okay, so it's it's rarity. Selling price is obviously no match to the amount he's charging. Everyone has a first aid. High impact rounds that we have right here. Go back to purchase mode. Ethoscope. Let's see. When the heat of battle causes bleed blood, blood pressure to rise, be sure to check in on the old ticker with your lightweight, durable. That's so 30% increase to max health, five points of defense. Not bad. There's not many things we can afford. A spiked bat. 
Alright, we're just gonna exit this, it's fine. Now, take out Ronnie's brewery to let him know who's boss. Not yet. Alright, we haven't had a chance to look at our characters, and that's something we want to do. I have no guns aside from the ones that's equipped on them. So he doesn't get a main weapon. Uh, but a lot of this menu has changed. Let's take a look first. So that's our character, that's our health. I actually don't know what that meter is. Our marksman, 75, 3 kills so far on the boss. He is a boss. That's our bonus icons that we looked at before we jumped in the game. We also would pick talents when we level up. I guess we did level up. Or at least we have available talent to pick. This is sort of our skill tree. Uh, bolster the rank is our default boss ability. We can pick up light footed to make sure we trigger no shots. Any character with 4 meters of you will bleed out instead of dying when they hit point. So bleeding out means you have a chance to go heal them. Survivor. Ah, make sure that we all, like, we always bleed out. This is for any other characters. I like this. That's the boss, you know, protect our gangsters. Let's see what we can build out eventually. We can do a mark for death, return fire, stealth watch, bull rush for melee, kill chain's usually really, really good. Crow's feet, drop some cow troops. Hmm. I think we start with lifeline, although we could probably look at our other characters first to see what skill trees we want to go with them. It's not instant. I think it takes a while to learn that skill. So our doctor here has heal. Plus 60. That's an awfully useful skill, to be honest. Aim for the leg for kneecap. Surgical precision. All attack gain 10% crit hit chance. Have 55% chance to cause targets to bleed. Be able to use shotguns. I prefer the sniper rifle. Break shot. We can break a target's weapon. Or a shrapnel bomb that also leaves the target slow with a knockback. Does she have hard? She has pretty high marksman for like a demolitionist, I think. Plus two projectile throwing distance, plus one explosive radius. Go long. She has a bonus trait of plus two distance on the throw and shockwave plus one effective radius. So I think we give her the shrapnel bomb. That makes a lot of sense. So it'll take 36 days. She'll start learning Perfect. it right off way. And uh, we can see the relationship. This is with other mobsters. I don't think they currently allow us to look at the black book because we're still in tutorial, but essentially there's a whole list of different uh, mobsters that we can recruit. There's relationship of who they love. There's relationship who they don't like and who they like. Basically determines who you can work together in a party. And if you kill like the loved one, it becomes problematic for them. And then we have a little bit of background trait, which I think is better introduced perhaps here. So she's an immigrant. I mean, no duh. Uh, plus 10% initiative, plus 10% movement. Stayed in school, plus 10% reduction in time taken to learn. Okay, so the 36 is a 40 discount, right? It's a 40 day learn for 36. Uh, only for demolition talent, professional talents. Neighborhood casino income when equipped to a safe house, 10%. That's called a passive boost. Loyalty gain increases. Fortune favors the bold. Uh, increase 20 morale when taking over a racket. 15% to crit resistance, 10 defensive bonus. Not very good to, ah, because she's disfigured on her face. Minus 20 persuasion plus 10 intimidation, okay. We are learning a talent, weapon proficiency. This is new in the game, uh, where if you're using a certain weapon type, you'll gain more efficiency with it. Um, I guess we are a submachine gun learner. And so forth, yep. Biography. Bao immigrated from China when she was still a teenager, bringing with her an impressive ability for crafting artisanal fireworks. Despite numerous attempts to hawk her dazzling displays to Chicagoans, her flair for explosive only seemed to find its footing within the seedy underworld. Now Bao sticks solely to demolition work. Uh, life lesson, fortune, those are the traits we picked up. Recent history, we killed some meatpacker guard, uh, became maid. So we got to kill someone to become maid. 
background after getting through reform school despite her careless attitude bao fled to america from china as a teenager uh giving her some equipments i think who can benefit from chance to crit i think she can because her spray shots three hit at a time so that would benefit quite well uh, we don't have any items, we don't have any armor. We have one melee weapon, but it's probably not going on her. It's probably going on boss man because he doesn't have a main weapon, which is kind of sad. And our dear lady. Let's look at her background real quick. So, combat you made a crystal so morale increases due to stuff that happened. She also has a lover. Not everyone has a lover, but she and our other girl both have a lover. Adam Henry, hired gun. So let's look at her traits, doctor's orders, minus 5% injury chance for nearby party members. Not bad. And that's a default on the doctor profession as well, plus 10% passive heal for nearby party members. Take your medicine, 10% passive heal for nearby party members. So are these just a combination of that or is just the doctor summarizing these? I'm not sure if we're getting double defect or not. She can learn a lot of different weapons. Shotgun, submachine gun, hack and slash, focusing on melee. But she might just be a healer for me. So I think maybe she should pick up lifeline. And then the boss doesn't have to do it. 72 days. Wow. Is she not have any sort of learning bonuses? I guess that's not a doctor talent, unless it's an 80 discounted to 72, which might be possible, actually. Also a casino boost. She's religious, so we got a lot of boosts. Racket upkeep. A penny saves a penny learned. Minus 15% for racket upkeep when the character is in the racket. Minus 20%. She's also disfigured. What? What? I think I, think I saw some scars on her leg, actually. Solon. Oh, terrible marksman. That's not good. Not good for a sniper. I, I guess be a healer. It's it's 72 days for all of these. Let's go for lifeline. Oh, good. Biography. Nora immigrated, uh, immigrated from Ireland when she was 16 years old. She had to vault many social hur hurdles as a female Irish immigrant, but eventually obtained her medical degree. Unfortunately, she was unable to sustain legitimate work in her field. The harder she tried, the more resistance she faced. In a desperate act, one which Nora will avenge, she was framed for administering too much medication to a patient, a hostile gambit, which ultimately cost the patient his life. Given the tip by a fellow doctor, Nora instead put her skill to good use with Chicago's criminal underworld. Alright, so background as... An Irish immigrant, Nora graduated from a coven school that instilled her with a strong sense of faith and a sullen nature. A rigorous spender. She believes a penny saves is a penny earned. Alright, so we kind of got to know our two mobster that we recruited. Now back to the boss. Alright, we can promote a visor, we can promote an underboss. We need higher notoriety to do that, so we can't do that yet. We're currently at 7, we need to do more things to get that done. Let's take a look at our traits. We are a child labor. Okay, so 15% reduction in time to learn boss talents. Casinos work better. Poverty. Man, we grew up bad. Child labor plus poverty. 10% defense bonus. 10% morale gain. Delinquent. All these go together. 10% uh, persuasion. Another 15% reduction. So 30% now. 10% intimidation. And brewery production goes up by 10%. Once per combat, if attack we kill this person, they instead bounce back with 20% HP. That is useful. So we might want to max health if we can, with items and that sort of thing. Cunning. Increase crit by 5% when we're flanking. So we're thick skin, minus chance of injury, plus any chance of crits, minus some leadership, plus some cruelty for cruel leadership decrease for us might hurt we are the boss but so far so good also there's also this new uh chicago fame and rank business that's going on with this new update we'll probably run into a tutorial for it later so someone's already learning lifeline i think we pick up 
I don't think we need this. Every time we die, we bounce back to 20% once per battle, right? Yeah, once per combat. So picking up the bleed out is like super secondary. Maybe we just outflank people. Snapshot. Fire targets. Double tap them. Breaking weapons. Steady watch. Trigger twice on overwatch. Return fire. We feel rather defensive, to be honest. Sure. I'm tempted actually to actually pick this one up. Then it's really hard to kill us, right? First time we go down, we bounce back 20%. Second time we go down, we bleed it out. Someone can save us. Yeah, let's actually do that. So 30% discount, work our way back. 14 down. What is the original cost here? This is 70%, 80. So 80 is the original cost. We're saving 24 points. Why is the doctor learning things so fast then? I'm confused. Wow, we can use a lot of weapons. And there are a lot of tiers for us to learn. Because we're a boss character, I guess all these are available to us from the beginning. Alright, you are even-tempered and scrupulous, but behind the veneer of cool professionalism lies a razor edge. This has made you well known for both cooking the books and the bodies. You worked your way up the ranks of Murder Inc. before being sent to Chicago to break into the underworld and take over that turf for them but you're going to go one farther. You're going to break it apart and remake it as your own. Cat has night alive, killed some guards. Zelnik grew up poor in Brooklyn, earning his way up as a kid by not only working in father's butcher shop, but by running illegal dice games behind it. A delinquent his whole life, his violent and conniving background made him cruel yet cunning. He's seen and delivers so much death that Zelnik himself is a hard one to put down. Abiding by the adage that a cat has nine lives. Okay, so we got to know our characters. Equipped with some items, and now we get to attack this shop. You need to move into cover. <laughs> Breweries are well guarded. And yes, yes. Okay, so our lovely immigrant has the highest initiative. No doubt. She's under decent cover, except for she can't get a shot on... I mean, 45, 65, 60, that's not too bad, I guess. We'll just start spraying. 55, is, he's open. Maybe we just kill him with three really well-placed crit shot here. <laughs> nope, not if two of them misses and the third one doesn't crit. Nora should try to pull back. We want to get a nice angle for future sniper round shots, I guess. And that's decent enough cover. So we'll just use both here of our movement there. I can summon some help. We should probably move into full cover and then summon our help right after, just to test our boss ability out. All right, boys. What? <clears throat> On my way. All right. So these get stronger the more notoriety we gain. Let's see. We are holding a shotgun right now, and then that switches to a pistol. All right. Switch back. 65 on him. Huh. And for shotgun, takes two action point as well. Wait, do we not fire? Okay, we didn't hit. I assume we're just gonna sacrifice the bodyguards. Ooh, big Overwatch. Fuck off! Oh no, a sweep. Ah. Only hit one though. Alright, our other bodyguard is holding a submachine gun. I'm gonna trigger the overwatch with him. I don't I guess I don't have to. He's still open. Ah. Knockback? It's a heavy machine gun. like this we could use a shrapnel grenade we're pinned down by this overwatch we probably should have moved this is still we gotta kill him right 
three shots, six health, just land one thing. There we go. He literally only landed one thing. Alright, can we get a sniper shot on someone? 55%. I didn't mean to hit that one, but sure. I was going to cycle through targets. Zelnik. We haven't learned our light foot yet. And that overwatch sucks. No luck there. Alright. We can fire again. There we go. Our other bodyguard. We don't have to get out of cover, I guess. Shotgun. 35, 35, 35. He only has 40 health. Can we try to kill him with one shot here? Yes. Good job, boy. Lifeline. He's bleeding out. We can save him if we want. Alright, so time to start moving. Myself in danger though, but we get a good shot on him. Or her. <coughs> Alright, boss man, I'm gonna jump out into the open. Actually, if I wanna hit with my shotgun, I have to fire here. Lucky shot. <laughs> Time to swarm him, I think. We'll keep trying with a sniper over here. Balls. On the move. Hmm. <laughs> Poor boy. <laughs> mm. I mean, there's no incentive for me to save him. Let's be honest. He's just the summoned guard. Oh, we gotta try to flank this guy. I don't have a shot. Let's move. Not too close, right? Still the distance factor. Mm, there's no angle here. We can hunker down, get another 10 points of defense. Alright, you gotta keep going. Can we get a shot now? 35% still? We'll do the pistol, I guess. But the percentage is still quite low. Like, even if we swap weapon, pistol, 40%. Okay, we'll take it. Just gotta flush him out of the cover. Nope. <laughs> also applied bleeding. Our guy dies. Police activity. Oh no, we don't want that. 30, 32. 31. It's about the same. We can't get close enough for a shot. I guess we can keep inching forward using this fat. Get a 30 something now. And the next turn we complete the flank. <laughs> Alright. 
on you. You can do it. Nope. The thing is, I only have a pistol on me. Leading out. No, we're gonna move into a better percentage. Hopefully it forces her to move. Wait, only 30 something percent here? There we go, gotta move here. Shit! Alright, Grandma, your last bullet in your sniper rifle. Nope. Boss man's gonna Balls. go with the knife. Boy knife actually does decent amount of damage. On the move. Alright, our bodyguard died in combat. Whatever. Five point notoriety. Got five hundred. Picked up some guns, some weapons, finally. And we looted more guns. Great job. Breweries are critical to a boss's empire. This brewery supplies alcohol. God damn you, Zelnik! You know I'm gonna have to come down hard on you for messing with my rackets. You know me. You know I thought this through, and I did it anyways. If you're gonna talk shit to me, you're gonna do it to my face. I'll teach you some manners. You're about to learn how this city works. You picked up a new weapon in the loot from that brewery fight. And not a moment too soon. Open your gangster sheet. The here you'll see your active characters. Here yeah, you I can know. see all of the weapons that your faction has available, and which weapons your character can equip. Note: each profession is limited to certain weapon types. Select a new weapon from the faction inventory if you want to equip it to your active character. So we have two shotguns to choose from. Twenty-two thirty-five damage. Twenty-four thirty-six damage. Crit damage is a little bit higher on this. Crit percent's a little higher on this. 10% knockback, 60 angle on the shot, 6, 8 range. A little higher range, a little higher percent knock. I think this is just better, I guess. And we also, well, we're not allowed to um, change anything else. We have to escape. If you're low on HP after a fight, you can use your doctor to heal up. Select your doctor, then interact with the character oh. you want to heal. From the you can do it outside of battle? Sit downs what with another it? boss, a serious business. They usually take place in a uh. boss's racket, but they can take place in safe houses too. Ooh. Zoom out to the world map to find Ronnie's safe house. Well, this is his safe house, and this is the owner of this precinct. Let's go meet him. I'm probably going to have to fight, and uh, obviously. Take over this precinct. Oh, we gotta. We're selecting the crew. Go on. Maxim Zelnik, I can't let this insult stand without consequence. I have half a mind to send you running back to New York. I'm not going anywhere, no matter what happens. Do or die, huh, Zelnik? Is that how you really want it to be? Because a war with me will end you. You will never beat me. It's not too late to kiss the ring. You're deluded. I'm doing the whole city a favor by putting you in the crown. I knew where this was going. I'm more than ready for you, Ronnie. Ooh, big uh, uh, showdown. Uh, uh, uh. Nah. <clears throat> Gonna bust you up. This is a boss battle, in the literal sense. To win at this game, you need to be the last one standing. Take by the way, 
If you get an enemy into a bleeding out state, it's worth putting them out of their misery. Perform a brutal execution, and you'll gain the bloodlust status Ooh. effect, which immediately gives you extra health. New bonus for executing enemies. All right, so let's see. They have two guards, three, four, five, and the boss. Five guards and the boss. We'll take it slow. We haven't learned many abilities, and let's see. Movements are not great in terms of where I can move to. We'll get the cover first. Let them come to us, I guess. Distance too close. Um, we could swap guns and just double tap him with a pistol. He has, what, 77 health? Okay. Boss man has a new shotgun. How many kills do we need? Two more enemies to summon two friends. That's gonna help us a lot. We don't need AoE, we just need to hit him. 93%, wow. 33% crit, let's crit please. Oh. No, okay, he lives. We almost have to make sure the boss man gets the kill. Zelnik needs two more kills to summon some guards. <laughs> Wish we had some sort of... I mean, we do have a grenade, but... If we use it, it's gone. And I want him to get the kill. So we'll just take cover and just start shooting them. There's still a 47% here. I'm on it. 45 in the back, but that's really far. So basically, he has no cover, that's why it's not red. But there's a range disadvantage for the submachine gun. I'm gonna save the kill for the boss. We'll shoot him. The range disadvantage should work in her favor. Oh no, she can't see. Oh, she, we can see him. Why is this? Oh, I guess we can't see that one. We'll still try to hit him. That's a lot of health that we can chunk. Wait, 40, 45, 40, we can kill him. Let's see if we can kill him. There we go. Okay, we're saving this one for the boss. I don't think we want to run in there. I think we take the pistol and play it safe. Just tap him twice to see if we can kill him on any one of the shots. 65%, there we go. We still get an action point left to use. Almost ready. All right, let's just tap some damage on Ronnie. Wreck this crew. Right, the full cover is doing wonders for us. <laughs> right, we just set up another kill for the boss. Percentages don't look so hot. I don't think we should run up though. We could, we could also reposition ourselves into another room. To kind of flank onto the side. Possibility, although I kind of like this doorway. Even though we have less percentages, they have less percentages too. Yeah, let's just try this. Ah, no luck. 65%. Oh, disappointing. Me. Oh. Get that All right, at. got one shot. Got to reload next time, but... All right, Ronnie's actually in a pretty deep... Oh. That's a good spot for us <laughs> to hit them. Oh, wow. 
bad news is coming together. What happened to cover? Okay. Um, terrible news. We can't get multiples. Let's still try to burst him. Covers just disappeared, apparently. Everyone can hit anyone. What about you? Can you kill him? No. I should probably take my first aid kit and heal up. Or perhaps a reload into a hunker down? Okay, at least Ronnie put himself out there. Near death? So basically, I don't know why we healed. We should have healed back only 20% of our max health. No? From Cat Has Nine Lives? I'm not sure how that worked out, actually. But Ronnie here put himself in our line of sight. Still trying to kill the guy in the back. 65% it's not low. <gasps> 8 health. Maxim. Maxim. Get that kill. Summon your guards. We need them. There we go. A bleed out. But that still counts. All right, boys. Need something? We're just running in there. It's our job now. Or we can actually we can flank. Let's go. Wipe them out. Feeling the pressure. Damn idiots! <laughs> oh no! Boss, I got you. I'm gonna go. Be stupid and run up into the middle. <clears throat> I think we push up. <laughs> no crit despite the ammo? A little sad. Should we also run up? I got you, ah, boss. Balls. Uh -huh. And I'm gonna just reload. Oh, good. We have angle on her next time. All right, my job is to be stupid for the boss. Let's do this. Oh, I move. had wrong character. Wrong character. Let me just return. My bad. I thought I, was, I, I had him. Wait, can I just hit him? 5%? That covers that strong? Just trade health, it's fine. I don't value these guys that much. Oh, she also had to reload. See, all calculated. She out, she was out of bullet. We knew. <clears throat> okay then. Alright, this is the bodyguard. You're supposed to run up here for us. Gonna hammer mm. you down. Yeah, let's spray this side. Uh, 
I want to go execute her. Basically, we don't need the heal. We're right out into the open, so we need the heal. <laughs> and, then, and then we'll go cutthroat. Alright, Nora. Good job on the healing. Got an angle. Take it. Good job. Alright, do I want to go up now or no? Got herself a shotgun. Boss versus Both. He can't kill me. Yep, he can't kill me. <laughs> I'll just keep her occupied. Right, he has an issue. He's a heavy machine gun that costs two, so he can't really hit him. I can walk up and punch him. I'll do it. Gonna mess you up. Uh. And we're gonna cut her throat. I'm going. I am not gonna take it anymore. We don't have a knife, so it's gonna be a punch her throat. Oh, okay. Kick her face in. Perfect. Okay. We got Bloodlust, so it'll heal us over time. Alright, we'll switch weapons. Ronnie, you're going down. Oh, shit. Oh, not quite. I'm gonna cut him up then. Let's move. Boss on boss violence. Oh, he's bleeding out. I can execute him. Wait, actually, we can finally use our shotgun. You don't get to execute him. I'm gonna execute him. We don't have a shot on the girl. We'll move up. I might be able to get a shot in. But let's wait. Nora also will position you. Any full cover here? No, not quite. Maybe you can sneak from behind. Leave Ronnie to me. Right away. I'm on it. We have a knife. Does it have to be using our foot? Someone's got to clean those shoes. I don't want you to get the kill. That experience should go to our our troops, our mobsters. I think pistol might be more of a guarantee. Two shots at 20%? Oh, it's, probably, no. it's probably Nora's going to sneak up from behind and kill her. Yep. Or we can just heal the boss, let the boss do the thing. Beckett. We can summon two more? Wow. Okay. I wasn't expecting that. Fitting end. I lit the fight. We did it. All right. Gain 19 point of notoriety. The Bureau of Investigation faction standing drops with all the forces of the government. Gain a bit of money, smelling salt. When you take over a precinct, you have four options available. 
Occupy lets you take over a precinct with all rackets in working order. Loot and Occupy okay. still takes over the precinct, but you'll wreck some rackets in the process. The sack and raise options won't transfer ownership to you. Sack wrecks the place for the faction that owns the precinct, but keeps them in control. Raze removes control of the precinct from that faction entirely and transfers it over to thugs. You can't raise a precinct run by thugs. Use sack and raise sparingly and strategically. Okay, so because this one's by thugs, we have to just occupy here. This is the precinct screen. You can get a good look at the state of your precinct from here. Looks like you've inherited Ronnie's thug problem. If you want to make the most of your precinct, you'll have to do something about them. At the top, you can see how many racket slots this precinct can hold, how many slots are available, how many are already built, and how many are occupied by thugs. There are five racket types. Speakeasies, breweries, brothels, casinos, and loan sharks. Speakeasies can't function without alcohol, but they've got a big capacity for customers. Breweries make the alcohol that runs your empire, so make sure you've got enough of them. Keep an eye on your police activity, because the cops love shutting breweries down. Brothels may not be your big earners, but they don't need much alcohol to function and they increase your customer cap in the precinct. Casinos have variable income, depending on how many big winners you get. They'll also draw more customers to the precinct. Striking a balance between your rackets is key to making sure you can support all those thirsty customers. Last, you've got loan sharks. You need to make an investment to build your first loan shark racket. They make decent money, and they don't need alcohol to function. But there's always the risk of people defaulting on their loan. In general, the higher you honor, the lower risk of default. If someone does try to get away without paying, you've got to think long and hard about what to do with them. Okay. Equipping available racket slots in your precinct provides you with reinforcements if your safe house or depot is attacked. No one else can build up in your precinct while you control it but there's always a chance that you can be attacked. You can see how much and what type of alcohol your precinct is consuming on the left side of the screen. The default for alcohol, you've also got improvement slots which apply bonuses to your precinct. They affect your rackets, police activity, and customers. You have a limited number of improvement slots available, so use them wisely. Keep taking precincts in the neighborhood, and eventually you'll achieve total neighborhood domination. Different neighborhoods provide specific bonuses once you have total domination over them. Explore the city to get a taste for the different offerings out there. Select a racket to see what kind of upgrades are available, or equip a new racket if you've got an empty slot. Close the screen when you're ready. All right, so... I want to open up a couple of loan sharks, but they're quite expensive. 5,000 to open up a new one. So we're going to have to start small. For most rackets, you've got four different ways you can class up your joints. Security, this is still the, the same. information panel to the right shows your upgrades. Close the precinct screen when you're ready to continue. Yeah, this is still the same as before. Uh, the type of upgrade you can get and the bonuses you get from it is displayed to the right. We're not going to spend too much time doing this right now. Um, we currently have a speakeasy plus a brewery. Not too bad. Um, the quality of production might be something we will think about. And that's our safe house. And there's different upgrades. You can produce a bit of alcohol from your safe house like before. So this hasn't changed at all. I can't really look at the uh, loan shark building, which is new because we are far short of that income. But it seems like the income structure has changed a bit and perhaps a bit better because it used to be pretty fruitless to try to build up your empire. And there's obviously the neighborhood bonuses. So we're in this, we got the eighth precinct under our control. Thugs own most of the precinct in our region. Three other bosses own the first, second and six. So we can easily expand into the thug territories and we can build things up. We'll take it slow. The nightlife area is the loop 
So average speakeasy spend increased 10%. That is our neighborhood bonus. So focusing on alcohol and speakeasy is better here. Interesting. And of course, racket synergy is still a thing. So two pair. So basically two of two different types. And there's three of a kind. There's different synergies you can create. Uh, it's, it's pretty fun the way they did it. But um, it wasn't quite balanced before. Hopefully it's better. We're going to just exit out of this. So I'm dead. Good for you. But my troubles are over. Yours just getting started. Congratulations. You've got your first safe house. Cash. Defend it at all costs. Your safe house gives you both defensive and offensive benefits. Take adjacent precincts to create depots and a supply line back to your safe house. Keep your supply line intact. Like everything else, your safe house needs security. It also has a small brewery in case the feds shut down everything else. You can upgrade as you need to, but to win at sin, you're going to need more than that. Right now, you'll need to do the legwork, but eventually, you'll get an underboss to do your bidding while you command things from here. All right. So, what now? Oh. Well, that's up to you, boss. You've got the tools to take over this city. How you do it is up to you. You've got a precinct under your control, but it's in rough shape. Clean it up, kick those thugs out, and you'll be well on your way. Good luck, Kingpin. Got it. So I think that's the tutorial, and that's pretty nice. And this is the black book that this I was talking about. This is the black book. From here, you can see which we will skip this are one. available for hire. Their relation. I don't think anything changed except for a few new types of um, gangsters were added in uh, that can do accountant work, basically. Uh, but this is like the structure of our empire with different thugs in different places. And these are the two that we recruited. And you require higher notoriety to recruit higher up ones. These are all the free ones. Different other factions in the game will recruit them too. We'll take a look at this in the future. I think we're just going to end our episode here. We'll come back and build up our first precinct and also eventually take control of our neighborhood and look to expand hey. elsewhere. Oh, there's Axe. Police activity generated from rackets reduced by 50%. That's new. And we have our first story mission as well, talking to our prodigy. Let's pause. Let's wait. Uh, game, well, different way of pausing. Anyways, we're going to end our episode here. We'll come back here next time and continue from this point. Until then, bye.